here's a calcium atom. The crosses represent electrons. And if we remo remove an electron, it's called ionization, and we form a calcium plus ion because electrons are negatively charged. If we remove a second electron, we get a calcium two plus ion, and that outer shell disappears, and we form a calcium two plus ion. So we now start removing electrons from this lower shell. Remove another one, we make a calcium three plus ion. And if we remove another electron, we make a calcium four plus ion, and so on. And this is called successive ionization energies. We successively remove electrons, starting with the outermost electron first, and take them away one by one. So for the first ionization energy, it's the energy required to remove the first and highest energy electron from a calcium atom in the gas state. So we write calcium gas becomes a calcium plus ion, also in the gas state, plus a free electron. The second ionization energy is the energy required to remove the second electron from that calcium plus ion. And it takes a bit more energy because we're removing a negative electron from a positive ion. So we make a calcium two plus ion now, plus a free electron. If we try and remove an electron from that calcium two plus ion, we're removing the third electron, so it's a third ionization energy. It's calcium two plus, it takes even more energy, so now we're removing a negative electron from a two plus ion. We make a calcium three plus ion plus an electron. So the fourth ionization energy, we take our calcium three plus ion, we remove an electron, and we make a calcium four plus ion. And we can keep doing this all of the way down until we've removed all of the electrons. And we can measure the value of these successive ionization energies. And if you have a look at the data, you see that they always increase. So let's have a look at um, some real data now. So the successive ionization energy for sodium, firstly, in that left column, they always increase, but in that first to second ionization energy, it jumps up by about 4,000, and then it starts going up by about 2,500. So the big jump is between the first and second. With magnesium, there's a big jump between the second and third ionization energy of about 6,000, and then in aluminium, there's a jump of about 9,000 between the third and fourth ionization energy. It's actually clearer to see these big jumps if you look at the graphs. So there's sodium, there's magnesium, and there's aluminium. So for sodium, it increases a little bit um, and then jumps up massively between one and two. For magnesium, it goes up a little bit and then jumps massively between two and three. And for aluminium, it kind of goes up steadily and then jumps massively between three and four. And we can look at the electron structure of each of these atoms to work out why this is. So let's start with sodium. Sodium is a group one metal, and we can predict that sodium will have one electron in its outer shell. If you use the SPD configuration for sodium, we can write it like this, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, and then 3s1. So we've got a total of 11 electrons in our sodium, and we've got one electron in the outer shell. If you draw the electron rings, you start with the nucleus, in that first shell, we've got two electrons. In the second shell, we've got two S electrons plus six P electrons. That's a total of eight electrons in the second shell. And then in the third shell, we've just got one electron in that S orbital. So we've got one electron in the outer shell, and it doesn't take too much energy to remove that first electron. Sodium easily ionizes, giving up that electron to become a sodium plus one ion. The next electron takes a lot more energy to remove because it's closer to the nucleus and it's coming from a full and stable shell, and then so on. We're taking electrons away from shells closer to the nucleus. So let's have a look at magnesium then. Magnesium is a group two metal, and the big jump in ionization energy is between the second and third ionization energy. The configuration for magnesium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and if we draw the structure, we draw the nucleus, and we start with two electrons in the first shell. In that second shell, we've got two plus six, eight electrons in total, two in the s orbitals, six in the p orbitals. And then in the third shell, we've only got two electrons in that s orbital. So if we remove the first, it doesn't take too much energy. It takes a bit more energy to remove the second, but now we're then moving to a shell closer to the nucleus, it takes a lot more energy to remove an electron closer to the nucleus from a full, stable shell, so we get a big jump in ionization energy. How about aluminium? So aluminium's in group three, and you can predict that aluminium is gonna have three electrons in its outer shell, 
And again, we can show this by looking at the SPD configuration of aluminium. So we start off with 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, and we can only hold two electrons in that 3S shell. So we have to put one into the 3P shell now. So in the first shell of aluminium, we've got two electrons. In the second, we've got two plus six, eight electrons. And in the third shell, we've got two in our s orbital and one in our p orbital. So that's a total of three. Two plus one is three electrons in that outer shell. So it takes a little bit of energy to remove the first, a bit more to remove the second, so removing it from an aluminium plus ion, a bit more to remove the third. And then we get the big jump from the third to the fourth because we then have to remove an electron from a shell closer to the nucleus and a full stable shell 